Marriage is not only a personal commitment between two people, but a social and political construct that reflects and reifies gendered social norms. These historical systems often reflect patriarchal and heterosexual notions of ownership, which create an array of challenges, especially in terms of consent and divorce. In this video, we have asked a range of Jewish and Muslim men and women to share how people get married in their religion and explain what types of challenges these marriage systems create today. So Islamic marriage is fundamentally a contract between a man and a woman who have freely consented to get married. And it has basic conditions that need to be fulfilled according to traditional Islamic jurisprudence. So the groom has to pay a bride price, uh, the mahar, and the bride needs to be given away by a wali or a male guardian. And traditionally, the marriage can be conducted by any practicing Muslim in the presence of at least two adult witnesses. But usually now there's a qadi or a marriage official who officiates the marriage. So this legal bit is the nikah component of a Muslim marriage, which may or may not take place in a mosque. And the nikah is usually followed by a walima or a wedding feast. Well, Jewish marriage has many beautiful rituals attached, including the famous chuppah canopy, which represents the Jewish home that the couple are going to create. Um, there's the reading of the kutubah, the marriage contract, reciting seven blessings to the bride and groom, uh, the breaking of the glass, which is symbolizing the mourning and the destruction of our temple, even at the times of our greatest happiness. Um, when it comes to um, the Jewish marriage, as a matter of English law, and I am a lawyer by training, the Jewish marriage in the UK is actually registered simultaneously as a civil marriage. So you don't have to have any kind of separate civil ceremony. Marriage ceremony in Islam is very simple. However, culturally, we've made this uh, system, marriage system, into a very lavish and expensive affair. And the way that, I mean, recently, one of my uh, sister's friends stopped her marriage, has delayed her marriage due to COVID, because she wants to land um, in a helicopter to announce her presence to the world. And imagine how much that would cost. Um, I often uh, feel uh, at the time of the chuppah that it is a very sort of patriarchal male space. Um, in general, the people who make the blessings are men and the people who run the ceremony are men and the people who speak are men. First of all, uh, uh, the lack of consent will invalidate a marriage uh, contract. Uh, however, as many women are represented by their male guardian, uh, the wali, uh, usually the father, uh, they may feel some family or societal pressure to accept uh, a marriage. And therefore, the idea of consent, although a lack of consent will invalidate a marriage contract, uh, in practice, it's often very difficult to enforce that or to identify that when uh, the male guardian is actually speaking for the bride and uh, accepts the offer of marriage on her behalf. And of course, uh, this uh, can sometimes give rise to uh, issues of forced marriage, which of course need to be distinguished between uh, arranged marriage, which is perfectly legitimate and valid uh, and acceptable in, uh, in Islam. Um, uh, but forced marriage and the lack of consent uh, is not, is completely prohibited within Islam. Uh, thirdly, um, men are allowed up to four wives. Um, uh, uh, as far as literal interpretations of the Qur'an are concerned, chapter 4, verse 3, um, but of course the second part of that verse is often not uh, looked at or highlighted, and uh, the second part of that verse, the Qur'anic verse, says that only if the husband can treat all wives equally uh, are they allowed to have more than one wife. The key difficulty is the Jewish divorce system, actually, which is at, at separate from the civil divorce system, and it's predicated on, on consent and the consent of the man, which has to be freely given. So the idea is that the, the Jewish get has to be freely given from the man to his wife, which in practice leads to all sorts of imbalances and difficulties, because there are many, many cases where a man may choose not to give that consent. And the question is, how, how does a woman deal with that if she wants to then move on with her life? I was involved at working uh, on 
get refusal cases for a number of years. And there are many, many different avenues that are being pursued in order to get around these, these, um, this, this framework, which range from campaigns within the Jewish community that are endorsed by uh, the Bet Din or the Jewish, the Jewish courts that oversee marriage and divorce to other uh, uses of criminal law. Um, and one thing I've been involved with recently is trying to bring get refusal into the laws which, um, which, which deal with coercive and controlling behavior. So actually criminalizing it. So Muslim women do not have sufficient protections against domestic violence, or if their husbands decide to take on additional wives. They do not have sufficient protection in cases of divorce, especially with child custody and claims for financial support. And the requirement for the bride to have a male guardian can be abused, for example, in cases of child marriage and forced marriage. So Sisters in Islam, which is an Islamic feminist organization, advocates for the rights of Muslim women in Malaysia. There's also Musawa, which is a global Islamic feminist movement calling for reforms in Muslim families.